Good morning, boys and girls. Good morning back there at home. How are you doing? I am good. I'm so alive and I want to say thank you so much, boys and girls. I hope you are keeping well at home. You are sanitizing yourself. You are wearing masks. You are not playing each and every time. You stay indoors because Corona is real, boys and girls. And even Corona is science, boys and girls. We want to welcome you this morning for our science lesson. So first of all, my name is Teacher Olunye. Teacher Olunye here will take you through science. Are you science? Do you love science? Are you part of science? Do you eat science? Do you even greet science, boys and girls? Now, uh, with us today, we are going just to go through our science KCPE 2021. Uh, which was supposed to be done in 2020, but because of COVID-19, boys and girls, we did this paper in 2021. That one was March 2021. Boys and girls, feel most welcome as we want to interact through these questions. I want to welcome all the classes, these ones from grade four, grade five, six, seven, and even eight, because in the KCP paper, it involves both the classes, all the classes. Most so those pupils who have not done KCPE, these ones from grade five, from class five, six, seven, and uh, now the seven which will be coming for the class eight as we finish term three, if the schools will be open. So back home there, boys and girls, ensure you are taking care of yourself so that when it is announced for us to come back to school, we are still healthy and so strong for us to take care of science, boys and girls. Now, as we start, boys and girls, in the year KCPE 2020, there were some questions that involved class three. And class three questions, we had only one question, boys and girls. We had also class four questions, and they were totaling to eight, boys and girls. We had also class five. This one was 14 to the slides. I think you can see and observe. Um, you can see the class distribution, boys and girls. As we go as we, from up there, we have class eight. Class eight, there are nine. Class seven, we had seven questions. Class six, we had 11 questions. Class five, we had 14 questions. And class four, we had eight questions, boys and girls. So we want just to go through these questions one by one. And as we are doing them, we are going to enjoy more so, boys and girls. So let us look at the first question. Let's look at number one, boys and girls. At number one, this question, boys and girls, is was talking about in which part of the digestive system are mineral salts absorbed? In which part of the digestive system are mineral salts absorbed? A, is it mouth? B, is it stomach? C, small intestine? Or D, large intestine? Boys and girls, look at that question. Uh, this question talks about the parts. So here you are supposed to understand the functions of each and every part of the digestive system. You need to know the functions. So this question was talking about the functional question. Functional question, boys and girls. Look at A, mouth. Is there any absorption that takes place in the mouth? Is there any absorption, boys and girls? I think no. There is no any absorption that takes place in the mouth. But let's look at B for boy, we have stomach. Is there absorption in the stomach, boys and girls? Yes, definitely we are going to have absorption in the stomach. But let us look at some of these parts where we have absorption. Where we have absorption. So we have, we have, we have boys and girls, we have, uh, we have parts where absorption are going to take place. The first part, boys and girls, we have the stomach. So there is absorption in the stomach. What is absorbed in the stomach, boys and girls? In this case, we have vitamins being absorbed. We also have, remember, vitamins are not digested. They are absorbed directly through our bloodstream. And that's why you are told 
take small amounts of vitamins, boys and girls. We have number two, where we have absorption. Here we have the small intestines. So in the small intestines, boys and girls, we have the absorption taking place. We also have the third part where we have absorption, that is the large intestines. So in the large intestines also, we have absorption taking place. Now, the question was asking that what is, uh, which part help in the absorption of mineral salts? Which part will help in the absorption of mineral salts? We also have, so we have the stomach where we have said vitamins are absorbed. Here in this stomach, we also have things like when you take medicine, Medicine also is going to be absorbed in the stomach. We also have things to do like uh, the, the glucose. We also have alcohol. When you drink alcohol, that's why we are told alcohol is bad. Alcohol is not good for your health, boys and girls. Now, we also have number two, where we have absorption of food. Which kind of food is absorbed here? Now, we have the digested food being absorbed. Digested food. Not just kind of food, but the digested one that one that has already been digested and broken down into absorbable substances. Then we have the large intestine where we have mineral salts, mineral salts and water. Mineral salts and water. So mineral salts, uh, here we have absorption of mineral salts and water. Now, let's go back to the question. In which part of the digestive system are mineral salts absorbed? Mineral salts absorbed. So definitely, boys and girls, even you, as I think you know now the answer, you'll find that large intestine was the correct answer in that question. D was the correct answer where we had the large intestine. So we are going to remove uh, mouth because in the mouth, the, uh, there is no absorption that takes place. But remember, we have digestion taking place. Now, we are going to remove stomach because in the stomach, there is no absorption of mineral salts. No, we have another one, small intestine. We're going to remove it because in the small intestine, we don't absorb the mineral salts. Remember, next time they won't ask you about the mineral salts, they can ask you where is water absorbed. Or they can ask you where is calcium absorbed. Now, why, how are we going to know that the answer is going to be large intestines? Because we said mineral salts are absorbed in the large intestine. And calcium is an example of mineral salts. Question number two, boys and girls. Question number two, question number two, question number two. Now, in the question number two, the, it was asking, it was asking which one of the following is the correct order of the development after fertilization in human beings? Which one of the following is the correct order order of the development after fertilization in human beings. Now, boys and girls, what is fertilization, first of all? This is the union between the sperm and the ovum. So when the sperms and the ovum unite and they fuse, we say fertilization has taken place. Fertilization has taken place. Just to draw. Just to draw, boys and girls, just to draw. Just to draw it very fast, boys and girls. Now, we have this part. This part here, we call it the ovary. Now, remember, the ovary produces what is called the, uh, the, the ovum. After every 28 days, we have what is called the ovum being produced, a process known as ovulation. Now, as the ovum is produced, if in any case we have the sperms getting through the vagina, boys and girls, we are going to have fertilization taking place in the oviduct, in the oviduct. Now, after fertilization has taken place, what are the other processes or other phases of development that are going to take place? Now, Immediately after fertilization, boys and girls, we have the zygote being formed. The zygote being formed. So we have the zygote followed by what we call the foetus. Then we have, no, not the foetus, sorry, not the foetus. 
uh, sorry for that, sorry for that, we have what is called the embryo. So we have the embryo, then we have the foetus. Now, these are the other phases of development. Immediately after fertilization has taken place, we are going to have the zygote being formed. Then the zygote is going to develop into an embryo. Then an embryo is going to be developing into the fetus. Remember that zygote is only a cell. It's a single cell. So zygote is only a cell. It's not a mass of cell. So an embryo becomes a mass of cell. But a zygote is just a single unit cell. So when this zygote continues developing, it's going to form into an embryo. Then an embryo will form into the fetus. So let's go back to the question. Let's go back to the question. Let's go back to the question. The question is saying, which one of the following is the correct order of development after fertilization in human being? A, embryo to zygote to fetus. I don't think that is the correct answer. So let's go back to B. Zygote, foetus, embryo. Definitely that one also is not the correct answer. According to our explanation, let's look at C, boys and girls. Zygote, embryo, fetus. Definitely that one becomes the correct answer. So look at how KCP becomes easy if you are reluctant in that paper and you become so observant, boys and girls. Let's now continue to question number three and get. What was question number three talking about boys and girls? Now, question number three is asking, which one of the following is an adaptation of plants in the dry areas? The question is asking about adaptation. What helps these plants to survive in these dry areas? And do you know the name of these plants? Are you able to recall? This one now is for the class eights. Are they able to recall the names given to these plants that are able to survive in the dry areas? Now, these plants, we always call them xerophytes. What have I said? We always call them xerophytes. They have certain mechanisms that help them to survive in the dry areas. Remember, these plants, they suffer from getting enough water. They don't have enough supply of water. So which kind of adaptations did God give them for them to survive in those environments? Is it A, fewer leaves? Is it B, broad leaves? Is it C, thin cuticles? Is it D, many stomatas? Which one do you think is the correct answer? The adaptations of these plants that are able to survive in the dry areas. A is talking about fewer leaves. Now, why do you think fewer leaves might be the answer? These are plants that are able to survive in the dry areas. So let me draw two examples of leaves. I have the first leaf is here. So I have this, the first leaf. So we have leaf A. Then I have I have the second leaf, which is called, let's name it leaf B. Now, when you look at these two types of leaves, you will notice that, boys and girls, the leaves have stomatas. So we have stomatas. We have stomata, boys and girls, we have stomata. Here also is having stomatas. If you compare the two leaves, which one do you think has more stomatas? Definitely you will find that leaf B has more stomatas than compared to the leaf A. Why? Because leaf A has fewer stomata. So eventually, leaf B will lose more water to the environment compared to leaf A. So which leaf do you think will help these plants that are not able to get enough water to survive? Automatically, you will find that we have leaf A will be for the dry areas. Why? It has fewer stomatas. It has fewer stomatas. So, boys and girls, the fewer the leaves also will also help these plants not to lose more water to the environment. But if this plant has more of these leaves, then automatically these plants are going to lose more water because they will have more stomatas. And more leaves create more stomatas and eventually there will be more loss of water to the environment. So look at B for boys. Talk about broad leaves. 
We have leaf A, leaf B. B is broader than A. So this B will lose more water. So this one becomes for the wet areas. While this one becomes for the dry areas. Then we have thin cuticles. Now the thin cuticles also are is, a, is, is also a very important thing that you should always remember. Remember we have thin and we have thick. These plants that have very thin cuticle are able to survive in the wet areas because they don't need to store any water. They are not succulent. They are not succulent anymore, boys and girls. So A, fewer leaves, B, broad leaves, C, thin cuticle, and D, many stomatas. So A, fewer leaves become for the dry areas. B, broad leaves, wet areas. C, thin cuticle, wet areas, many stomatas, wet areas, because these plants that are growing in watery areas, in the wet areas, they don't require more water. They need to lose more. So they're going to have more stomatas for them to lose, for them to lose more water. Question number four, boys and girls, question number four. Let's go to question number four. Question number four. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. What does question number four say? Let's read together, boys and girls. Let's read together. The following are some characteristics of weeds. This is a class four work. This is a class four work. The old class four work. Not grade four, but class four. Roman one, strong smell. Roman two, thorns on the stems. Roman three, pink flowers. Roman four, purple or white flowers. Now, which two characteristics are for the Sodom apple? Now, boys and girls, here you are supposed also to identify. So your teacher would have taught you this kind of weeds, and you would have seen them, even in the farm. You would have looked at them. You see the characteristics. Which ones have strong smells? Which ones have tap roots? Which ones have fibrous roots? Which ones have white flowers? Which ones are purple in color? Which ones are pink in color? Now, boys and girls, remember your teachers already taught you. You are in the KCPE. So you need to recall. You need to recall and ask yourself, which kind of weed was this that had these kinds of characteristics? So we are looking for those characteristics that are for Sodom apple. Strong smells. Now, boys and girls, is strong smell for Sodom apple? No. Strong smell is, remember we talked about strong smell becoming for the, for the Mexican marigold. So Roman one, strong smell becomes a uh, characteristic for a Mexican marigold. Mexican marigold. Thorns on the stems. Thorn on the stem. Thorn on the stem. Thorn on the stem. Now, thorns on the stem. Thorn on the stem becomes a characteristics for Sodom. Epo. Remember, the question was not talking about thorns on the fruit. Now, when they had, to, if they talk about thorns on the fruits, then you can also think about the thorn epo. But here they were talking about thorn on the stem. So thorn on the stem becomes a characteristic of Sodom apple. The second one, the, 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 the next one was pink flowers. Now, boys and girls, pink flowers is not for the Sodom apple. Pink flowers is a characteristic of the oxalis. So the oxalis have what is called the pink flowers, not uh, of Sodom apple. Sodom apple, for them, they are going to have what is called the purple. I know this one is the common one that you know. But this time in KCPE, the examiner wanted you to identify this flower effectively. So the examiner added something which was white. And his, the examiner said white. So they said white purple flowers or purple and white flowers. Now, remember, generally, the sort of apple, for them, they don't have the white flowers. They don't have the white flowers. Sodom apple, they have purple flowers. But because 
it has some of the uh, some of the inside the stigmas and some of the parts becoming white that's why the examiner now talked about purple and white flowers there are also other characteristics of Sodom Apple boys and girls. I think you can even try to assist me naming them there back at home. You'll find that they have taproot. Remember, Mexican marigold is the only, uh, the, the wandering Jew is the one that has the fibrous root. But the remaining weeds, most of them, they have the taproot. So Sodom Apple has taproot. Sodom Apple has the taproot. Sodom Apple has the stab root. Remember that it also has some fruits. And what's the color of these fruits? These fruits are green when unripe, when they are not, when they are unripe. But when they ripen, they will be now yellow. So they will turn yellow. So they have green when they are not ripe. But when they ripen, they now become yellow. So these are some of the characteristics of Sodom Apple. Back to our question, boys and girls, back to our question, back to our question. Our question was asking, which two characteristics are for Sodom Apple? Roman one, strong smell. My question is, do you think Sodom Apple has strong smell? No, definitely. So you'll go to your question, remove all the choices that have, eliminate all the choices that have Roman 1. So let's go and remove all the choices that have Roman 1. I want to tell you how KCP is very simple when you are very observant. Let's go to C. We're going to remove C because C has Roman 1. So we'll remove it because we have said that Sodom Epo does not have the strong smell. So we're going to remove C. And again, we are going to remove D. How many choices are we remaining with? Two. We are remaining with Rom uh, choice A and choice B. So let's go to Roman 2. Roman 2 talks about thorns on the stem. So that one we are going to leave for some time. Let's go to Roman 3. Pink flowers. What did I say about pink flowers? Do Sodom Apple have pink flowers? Definitely no. Pink flowers are for Xalis. So we are, going to we are going to remove Roman 3 in our choices, in the two remaining choices, that was A and B. And definitely, our correct answer is going to be choice boy. Our correct answer is going to be choice boy. Which answer is that? Thorns on the stem and purple or white flowers. Purple or white flowers. Purple or white flowers. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, boys and girls. I hope we are going together and you are able to tell the candidates that did the exams. Now you are able to tell where you tried and where you forgot. So let us look at choice number five as I speed up because I want us to try and finish the paper even if we do not, even if we are not going to talk about it effectively, but at least you are going to know where you, where you went wrong and where you did your best. So if time is going to allow us, we are going to go through the questions. But if time is not going to allow us, we are just going to leave it from that point. Let's go to number five. What does number five talk about? Number five talk about the human tooth that mainly helps to tear, to tear meat from bones. Boys and girls, I know here you love it so much. <laughs> if those people love meat, I know here you are so keen to understand which kind of teeth is this that talks about uh, tearing. Tearing, which, which teeth is this? So we need to know the functions again. And boys and girls, I want to tell you, when the teacher is explaining the functions, Either the function in the digestive system, the functions in the respiratory system, the functions in the circulatory system. Boys and girls, be very attentive. So let us look at this kind of teeth very fast in a very summarized way. So let us look at this. So we have the first teeth, boys and girls. This first teeth is known as the incisor. The incisor. So we have the incisor. Then we have the canines or what you sometimes people call canines. So we have this teeth. Then we have another teeth. Another teeth here, boys and girls, is the premolar. Premolar. Then we have the fourth type of teeth, which is called the molar. So we have four types of teeth. 
We have the four types of teeth. We have the four types of teeth. We have the four types of teeth. The first one is the incisor. The second one, the canines. The third one, the premolar. And the fourth one, the molars. I wish time would have allowed us to talk more about the teeth. We cannot finish talking about the teeth because it's very broad. We are able to talk about their functions. So how many incisors do we have for the adults? So the adults, they have which we call the eight incisors. The canines, they have four for the adults. The premolars, how many are these in the premolars? Now in the premolar here also we have eight. Then molars, we have 12. A total of 32. So adults have 32. Adults, they have 32. Now let's, let's now talk about their functions. Incisors, they are used for cutting, biting. Sometimes we'll talk about nibbling, but this one is for the rodents. Then we have canines, tearing. Uh, examiners can talk about gripping, grasping. Then also we have premolars, where we have they grind, they chew, they crush. So the premolars and the molars, their functions are the same. Their functions are the same. But now how can you differentiate between the premolar and the molar? The premolars, they have two roots, while the molars have three roots. That's the way you can differentiate the two. Premolars, they have two roots, then the molars have three roots. Now, back to our question, boys and girls, back to our question, and we talk about now the function. The main tooth that mainly help to tear meat from the bones. A, is it incisors? B, is it canines? C, is it premolar? And D, is it molars? I think now you know the answer. Which teeth is this that talks about tearing? Definitely the answer become canines. So canines, canine was the correct answer. We remove incisors because incisors are used for cutting, biting. Premolars and molars are used for crushing, grinding. So your correct answer, boys and girls, if you did your exam, your correct answer that you're supposed to pick was canines because canines were used for tearing. Now let's go to the question number six. I'm trying to go very fast, boys and girls. I hope you're going to understand. Question number six. Which one of the following instrument is used to measure two different aspects of weather? Two different aspects of weather. A, is it wind vane? B, is it thermometer? C, is it rain gauge? And D, is it wind sock? Now, here you also need to know the aspects being measured by each and every instrument. This is a class five question. Wind vane, wind vane. What is measured using a wind vane? Wind vane is used to measure which kind of aspect? So wind vane will measure the direction, and it only measures one aspect. Then let's go to thermometer. Thermometer, here we are, use, we are using thermometer to measure temperature. Temperature, I will come back to thermometer for those bright children, because I know majority of the bright children would have picked thermometer. But I will explain the reason. Let's go to C. C talks about rain gauge. Now, rain gauge is used to measure what we call rainfall, the amount of rainfall that falls. Then D, we had wind sock. Now, which is the main aspect being measured when you use a wind sock? Now, a wind sock is used to measure what we call the strength, and that is the main, the strength, the strength. And remember, it's not the speed. Don't confuse between the speed and the strength. Here we are talking about wind sock, wind sock used to measure the strength of the wind. But remember, as you measure the strength, you are able to tell the direction, the direction uh, towards which the wind is blowing to. Now, we have wind sock. Here we have known that wind sock is used to measure the strength and the direction. The question was talking about two aspects. So in this case, question number six, the correct answer, boys and girls, was wind sock. Wind sock. Because wind sock is used to measure two aspects. Two aspects. Two aspects. That is, that is direction 
and the strength. But if there is an examiner who has asked you about the main function of the windsock, don't talk about the direction. Talk about the strength. Now, let us go back to thermometer so that we know why some of our bright children would have picked thermometer. Now, the bright children would have picked thermometer because they have read that we have thermometer measuring temperature and air pressure. But the examiner here did not talk about air thermometer. The examiner here was very specific. The examiner talked about thermometer. So don't confuse the bright children. Don't confuse between air thermometer and windsock. So the bright children would have gone for thermometer, thinking that thermometer would have measured too the temperature and air pressure. And here in this case, you will get a wrong answer because thermometer here measures temperature. So the best answer, boys and girls, was supposed to be windsock. Anytime you are doing a science paper, you must always learn to pick the best answer. The best answer, not just picking. Let's go to question number seven. Question number seven, question number seven. Question number seven, let's read together. Which one of the following is a proper use of drug? Taking more dosage of prescribed medicines to heal faster. B for boy, buying prescribed drugs from the pharmacy. C, borrowing drugs from a neighbor whenever sick. And D, taking malaria drugs whenever you have headache. <laughs> Which one of the following is the proper use? Now, here we have proper use. The examiner is talking about the proper use where you don't misuse the drug. Where you don't misuse the drug. Now, remember you have talked about these things, class five. Taking more dosage of the prescribed. Are you supposed to take more drugs? Are you supposed to overdose? The doctor has given you a prescription. The doctor has told you, ensure you take the correct dosage. Then you go at home and say, oh, I want to heal very fast. I want to heal very fast. I want to go back to school. This kind of sickness is wasting for me time. I want to take the drug and go home. Hey, surely, boys and girls, is, is that a way of using the drugs? So that is not a good way of using drugs. Automatically, you are overdosing. And that one is a misuse. That one is not a proper use of drug. Let us look at B. Buying the prescribed drugs from the pharmacy. <laughs> Here the examiner was very clever. The examiner definitely was very clever. Because I know most of you know very clearly that buying drugs over the counter is wrong. I don't think that is wrong. It's not wrong. Because the doctor can prescribe for you, then you go and buy it over the counter. But be very careful. If the examiner would have not written prescribed, the examiner would have just said buy drugs over the pharmacy or, over, uh, uh, or from the counter. That one now becomes a misuse. But the examiner was so clever and the examiner said buying prescribed drugs from the pharmacy. And boys and girls, I think that was the correct answer to me. Let's go to C. Borrowing drugs from your neighbor. Never, never, never borrow drugs from a neighbor. That one is not a proper use of drug. That one is bad because you don't know which kind of drug are you going to take. And first of all, the doctor has not examined you to, uh, to tell you that you are supposed to take that drugs. Even if you are suffering from the same signs and symptoms, don't share drugs. That one is not a proper way of using drugs. Let's look at D for dog. Taking malaria drugs whenever you have an headache. <laughs> Surely. And I know this one is very common. Hey, I know you. I know you back at home. This one is very common. Ah, mommy, I'm feeling some headache. Oh, go and take some Panadol. Oh, ah, mommy, I'm feeling some stomachache. Oh, go and take some painkillers. Surely, this one is not right. This one is wrong. You are not supposed to misuse these drugs just by buying and taking them because you suffer from the same sign and symptom or because you have a headache, you take these drugs. So boys and girls, the correct answer for question number seven, 20, 
20 KCPE was boy as we wait for the directive from the NEC. Boys and girls, remember, we are still even waiting for the report from the NEC so that we are able to tell the correct answers and analysis of our science paper correctly. But boys and girls, question number seven, the correct answer was boy. Question number eight, question number eight, question number eight, Question number eight. In Kenya, rivers passing through cities are mainly polluted by A, industrial waste, B, oil spillage, C, soil erosion, D, agricultural chemicals. Agricultural chemicals. Remember, boys and girls, these are rivers that are passing through cities. Most cases, you don't expect we have, we have uh, farmers in the cities. So you will not talk about some agricultural chemicals, more so in the cities. Now, in the cities, first of all, you need to understand what are the things that pollute the environment in the cities. So in the cities, boys and girls, we have things like uh, the, 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 the sewage, the sewage. We also have industrial waste. And even in our choices, you can look, we had industrial waste. Oil spillage. Now, remember, oil spillage commonly takes place in the large water sources, like oceans, seas. We don't have, or more, most cases, we don't have oil spillage in the cities or even in the rivers. Be very careful because we are talking about oil spillage, and oil mainly spills when it comes to oil tankers, those ones that transport mm, large oil, uh, large oil uh, from other countries to bring in our country, or from our country, remember, to Canada now, nowadays, uh, is, uh, uh, we are able to produce some oil. So soil erosion. Soil erosion here also become more of uh, the farm. And in the towns, we don't have more farm activities taking place. So boys and girls, here in question number eight, the correct answer was industrial wastes. Industrial waste. Industrial waste. Because we have industrial gases mainly in the urban areas, in the cities, and these ones pollute the environment and eventually they will pollute the water bodies or the water sources. So the correct answer, boys and girls, here in question number eight was industrial waste being the correct answer. Question number nine, Question number nine, which one of the following pairs of vaccines is administered at birth? Is administered at birth, at birth, at birth. Now, here, boys and girls, we need just to draw the table. So we have at birth, then we have six weeks, then we have 10 weeks, then we have 14 weeks, then we have nine months. Remember, this one is a summarized immunization schedule. It's just a summarized immunization schedule. If you look at yours, you'll find there's some slight difference uh, with yours, the one that you have at home that you went with it to the hospital. Now, we have at birth. What is being vaccinated at birth? So we have the vaccines, the vaccines being, being given. So we have what is called the OPV. The OPV is a vaccine given to protect you against polio. That's why it's called oral, oral polio vaccine. Then we have this, the second one, which we have the BCG. Now, BCG is a vaccine that is given to protect you or against TB. Uh, then we have six weeks. Now here we have DPT, the first DPT vaccine. Then we have Remember, OPV is still being given, the second OPV. Then we have DPT, 10 weeks. Then we have OPV. Then 14 weeks, we also have another DPT. Then we have OPV, that is oral polio vaccine. Then nine months, we have what is called the anti-measles. The anti-measles. Then also we have the anti-yellow fever. So. This is just a summarized table. We have others. We have the hepatitis B. We have other vac other uh, vac uh, other uh, immunization diseases that are, uh, are lacking there. But this is just a summarized one so that we can understand this question. So, which one of the following pair of vaccine uh, is administered at birth? At birth. At birth. At birth. Now, at birth, if you can look at that table, boys and girls, we don't have DPT at birth. 
So any choice that has DPT, you are supposed to remove. So let's go to the, the question and remove all the choices that had DPT. Choice B, we are going to remove choice B because choice B has DPT and measles. We are going also to remove choice A because choice A has BCG and, and DPT, so you remove DPT. So you remain with choice C and choice D. But look at choice D. Choice D has polio, which is correct. But look at the, the, the combination of polio, polio and measles. So you are going to remove measles because look at our table. Our table talks about measles being given at nine months. So you will remove the measles because measles are not given at birth. So your correct answer, boys and girls, was supposed to be choice C because choice C talks about BCG and polio, definitely. Look at the way this paper was looking so simple, but we are told that we failed it. We are told that we dropped, boys and girls. I know it was very tricky for some people who did not look it well. But I also want to take this time, all boys and girls, and congratulate you because most of you did their best. Let's go to choice 10. Question number 10, sorry. Which one of the following is the least effective control measure for sexually transmitted diseases among the married couples? Hey, 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 boys and girls, are you married? <laughs> are you married? Not yet, definitely. Not, not yet, not yet. So, <laughs> you are not married. And if you are not married, boys and girls, you cannot talk about being faithful. Who are going to be faithful to? Surely. So don't talk about being faithful. Huh? Let's look at boy. Boy talks about use of sterilized personal items. Who are you going to use them to? Because you told me, boys and girls, you are not married. You are not married. Remember the exam is talking about the married people. The married people. So uh, uh, testing and counseling. Testing and counseling. Testing and counseling. This one also is okay. But now the question, let's go back to the question. Which one of the following is the least effective control measures for the sexually transmitted diseases among the married couples? Remember, these people are married. So if they are married boys and girls, definitely you don't expect them to abstain. You don't expect them to abstain. Because they have their own bedroom, boys and girls. So they don't ex you don't expect them to abstain. That one becomes the least effective method. However, if they go to the doctor, the doctor can advise necessarily. So yeah, that one becomes the correct answer. D becomes the correct answer because D is the least effective method for those people who are already married. But the ones that who are married, they need to be very faithful. They need to be very faithful to their partner. And only one. The Bible talks about one. So be faithful to only one partner, boys and girls. And we go to question number 11 as we continue. Question number 11, boys and girls. Question number 11. Question number 11. Which one of the following statement is true about blood vessels? Is true about blood vessels? Is true about blood vessels? Remember, this is now a class 7 work talking about the circulatory system. A, outer has vessels. The outer, aorta has valves. Aorta has valves. That one is not correct because we said that veins are the ones that have valves to prevent the backflow. Let's jump choice C and go to choice C. Pulmonary veins carry deoxygenated blood. Pulmonary vein. Remember we said that all the veins carry deoxygenated blood apart from pulmonary vein. Why? Pulmonary vein is an abnormal vein. Yes, it's a vein, but it does not carry deoxygenated blood. Pulmonary vein is going to carry the oxygenated because it does the opposite. It is abnormal. I always call it like that, boys and girls, because pulmonary vein, it is trying to go to the opposite, the opposite way. So let's go to choice D. Pulmonary artery carries blood to the heart. Automatically, that one is not true because we know that all the arteries carry blood away from the heart, not to the heart, not to the heart. So choice A is not correct, choice C is not correct, choice D is not correct, and definitely choice B was correct because choice B talks about vena cava has thin walls. Vena cava has thin walls. If I draw the vena cava, boys and girls, if I happen to draw the vena cava, if I happen to draw the two, so I have 
the first drawing I have vena cover. So that is my vena cover because look at the wall. The wall is very thin and also veins have valves. So this one is vein. So the vein, they have the valves. Uh, but let's look at the artery also. The arteries, they have thick wall, not the thinner one. And remember, arteries don't have valves. So this is the two uh, drawings. We have the veins and we have the arteries. So the arteries have thick wall, while the veins, they have thin walls. Thin walls. You can also talk about the lumen. You find that these ones have wider lumen, while these ones have uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the thin lumen. So this whole here is the lumen. This one is the wider one that is there, boys and girls. So the correct answer in question number 11, boys and girls, was vena cava has thin walls. Vena cava has thin walls. Let's go to question number 12. In order to save soap during washing, the most suitable source of water is rain. The most suitable source of water is rain. Because rain is a source of soft water. Rain is a source of soft water water. Why do you think we removed river, we removed spring, and we removed boreholes? However, boys and girls, be very keen with the books you are reading. Some of the books will talk about spring being soft water, uh, which uh, that one is yet to be proven, but if you read the primary science, you'll realize that spring is not classified under the soft water. So the correct answer, boys and girls, here was rain. So rain is good when it comes to washing, so they don't waste uh, more soaps. Because remember, we, we talked about this one in class 8, where we talked about hard water and soft water. You realize that soft water is good when it comes to washing. But hard water is not good, favorable for washing, because it is going to waste a lot of soap. Uh, uh, the question number 13, boys and girls, pupils observe that some objectives, some objects with hook and stuck on their clothes, the objects are likely to have come from which kind of weed? We are talking about class 4, boys and girls here, where we also talk about weeds. Which kind of weed is this that it has certain structures or certain objects that have hooks and they stuck on their clothes? Which kind of weeds are these? A, is it Sodom Epo? B, is it Mexican Marigold? C, is it Blackjack? D, is it Oxalis? Which one do you think is the correct answer, boys and girls? Which weed is this that has this kind of fruit? Uh, which weed is this that has this kind of fruit? Sometimes you go to the farm and uh, you are trying to remove this weed and this weed becomes so stubborn. It will, stack, it will stick on your clothes. It can also stick on some animals. So you need to know which kind of weed is this. Is it Sodom Epo? Is it Mexican Marigold? Is it Blackjack? Is it Oxalis? So automatically, which one becomes the correct answer, boys and girls? Blackjack. So the Blackjack has this kind of fruit that is able to stick on people's clothes. So as you, as you are doing that experiment, maybe with your teacher, you went for a nature walk, I think you observe this kind of weeds. Uh, let's go to question number 14. Question number 14, boys and girls, talks about an individual with the teeth problem is likely to have started uh, by experiencing dash. Which kind, which kind of problem do you think this person who uh, uh, had uh, the, uh, the, 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 which had these teeth problems had started with? A, bleeding gums, tooth decay, cavities, bad smell. Which one is the first experience? Which one is the first cause of all these uh, problems that are related to teeth? Which, is the, which, one, which one is the best method for you to prevent these problems? Definitely is you brushing your teeth. If you don't brush your teeth, boys and girls, automatically you will have these kind of problems. So which problem is this? A, bleeding gums, tooth decay, cavity, bad smell. An individual with teeth problems is likely to have started experiencing bad smell. Why? The person did not brush the teeth. So if you don't brush your teeth, you don't take care of your tongue, you will have bad smell. Question number 15. 
that. So question number 14, the answer was dog, bad smell. Question number 15, which one of the following methods can control both the tick and the liver fluke? Both the tick and the liver fluke. Both the tick and the liver fluke. Both the tick and the liver fluke. A, is it rotational method of grazing? B, dipping? C, spraying? And D, warming? So, deworming. So here, boys and girls, you are supposed to identify this kind of uh, this kind of, of, of parasites. Uh, are they internal? Are they external? Are they both? So you need to know which kind of parasites were these. Now, tick is an external parasite. Liver fluke is an internal parasite. Which kind of method are you going to use to control both the internal and the external parasite? So definitely, boys and girls, you know the answer. Which answer is this? Rotational methods of grazing. We remember we talked about rotational method controlling both internal and external. So tick is an external parasite, while liver fluke is an internal parasite. So the correct answer, boys and girls, in this KCP 2020 was rotational method of grazing. So the correct answer was choice A. But be very careful. Remember, even, as, even, even if we are saying that rotational method of grazing control both internal and external, remember it does not control sesefly. Sesefly is so uh, stubborn. You don't control it by rotational method of grazing because it's just going to jump to the other uh, paddock, jump to the other strip. So you are not going to uh, control this sesefly. So which one is the best method of now controlling sesefly? Destroy their breeding places. Ensure you destroy all their breeding places so that they don't breed more they die automatically. But remember, rotational method of grazing is a method of controlling both external and internal parasites. Question number six, 16, sorry, question number 16. Which one of the following is the importance of pretest counseling for HIV and AIDS? Which one of the following is an importance of pretest counseling for HIV and AIDS? Now, this question number 16 uh, uh, brought a lot of contention between uh, uh, the, the specialists here, but you need to understand here, boys and girls, we have A, avoid spreading the disease to other people. B, understand the risk of contracting the disease. C, understand the importance of good nutrition for healthy living. D, give advice on living positively with HIV uh, with the disease. So here you need to understand what is pretest counseling, what is post-test counseling, and what is the test, what is the now the actual test, what is called the ELISA test. So what is pretest counseling? This is a kind of counseling, boys and girls, that is done before you are actually tested. It's a counseling, it's a guidance. So you are being told. You are being communicated to. You are being educated about. So the pre-test counseling. Then we have the post-test counseling. What is now post-test counseling? This kind of counseling is done after the testing, but before the results are given to you. So before this, uh, doc before the doctor gives you the results, he is going to give you some counseling so that you are able to take the test positively so that you're able to live long if you have the disease. And again, if you don't have the disease, also you are going to be guided. So we have the pre-test counseling done before the testing. Then we have the post-test counseling done after the testing, but before the results are given. So which one was the correct answer, boys and girls, here? Even as we wait for the actual answer from the, uh, from the uh, Ministry of Education and the NEC itself. Now, avoid spreading the disease to other people. Now, this one will not be the correct answer to me. Why? Why do you think so? You still don't know if you have the disease or not. So who are you going to spread it to? And you still don't know. Avoid spreading the disease to other people. So you still don't know the result. It's a pre-test counseling. You have not even been tested. B for boy, understand the risk of contracting the disease. To me, I think this was the correct answer. Because even now, in class four, you talk about the risks and you still don't have the disease. You are not yet tested if you have not been tested. So this pretest counseling is also an educative way. 
in which you are going to know how you are going to get it, what are the risks, what are the repercussions, and even how to protect yourself ag against these kind of diseases. So my correct answer, boys and girls, here was understand the risk of contracting the disease. C, understand the importance of good nutrition for healthy living. This one is for post-test because now you have been told the results. If it is positive, you are now going to be told how uh, to, uh, to take care of your health. Then D, to give advice on the living positively. Here also is done post-test so that you are told how are you going to live positively. So, boys and girls, just to reread re re the question and answer it correctly, which one of the following is the importance of pre-test counseling for HIV and AIDS to understand the risk of contracting the disease? To understand the risk of contracting the disease. This one becomes the best answer for the pre-test counseling uh, in related to this question. Because, boys and girls, my time is... Uh, is almost up, boys and girls. I just want to rush through some of few questions, then we will continue next time. Question number 17. The following are some characteristics of cross-pollinated flowers. So I'll not be explaining more, but I'll just be going directly to the question. Which four characteristics are only for the insect-pollinated flowers? This is a classic question. So you need to know the characteristics of insect pollinated flowers and characteristics of wind pollinated flowers. So which characteristics were these that were for the insect pollinated flowers? Here in number 17, the correct answer was A, which was talking about small and family attached anthers. Roman three, stigma is inside the flower. Roman four, stigma is sticky. And Roman six, flowers are large in size. Flowers are large in size so that the insects are able to see them. Question number 18. In which one of the following activities is water used for transport? Is water used for transport? Here the correct answer, boys and girls, was boat crossing a river. Boat crossing a river. This one now becomes a transport. Remember if they would have said boat racing. Now it does not become a use of water for transport. It becomes use of water for recreation. So the correct answer here, boys and girls, was boat crossing a river. Swimming is for recreation. Boat racing is for recreation. Fishing is for, uh, for, for agriculture. For, uh, for, agriculture uh, for, no, for recreation also, sorry. For recreation uh, also, sorry. Number 19, which one of the following diseases, uh, uh, which one of the following diseases, uh, disease symptoms is for cholera? Which one of the following disease symptoms is for cholera? Here in number 19, boys and girls, the correct answer was vomiting and diarrhea. Vomiting and diarrhea. Why did we remove itching and coughing? Itching and coughing is for bilharzia. Blood in the stool is for bilharzia. And also we also have uh, also for typhoid. Blood in the urine, blood in the urine, that one is only for bilharzia. Because bilharzia fluke attack the bladder. Uh, question number 20. Which one of the following parts of the digestive system does not produce the digestive enzymes? Here, boys and girls, the examiner introduced another term, uh, another new term. I know most of you, some of you had not heard about enzymes, but I think the choices would have guided you wisely. Now, which ones, here in this case, this, exam, this question can be paraphrased in this way. Which one of the following uh, which, one the follow, which one of the following does not show uh, where digestion takes place? Or which part, of the follow, which, one, which part of the digestive system is digestion not going to take place? So we have A, small intestine. We have B, mouth. We have C, large intestines. We have D, stomach. So the correct answer here, boys and girls, was large intestines. Remember, we had talked about it earlier. Large intestines, there is no digestion. So the large intestine is not going to have what is called these digestive enzymes. Number 21, which one of the following is the most effective control measure against the spread of malaria? Against the spread of malaria, boys and girls, sleeping under a mosquito net. Remember, we are, we are getting the most effective. If you sleep under the treated mosquito net, that one is, an, is, is a way of controlling malaria, but it's not the most effective. The most effective. Which one is the best one? Is it to wait for you to cure or for you to prevent it? So the best answer is becoming a preventive answer. So C, treating of infected person. 
treating of insected, uh, infected person. Then also we have use of mosquito repellents. So all these are methods of, pre of, of preventing malaria or of controlling malaria. But we are asking for the most effective. So the most effective boys and girls here was draining of stagnant water. Draining of stagnant water. Draining of stagnant water. Which one of the following is the social effect, effect of drug abuse? So the number 22, the correct answer was drug-induced accident. Drug-induced accident. That one is becoming a social effect. Withdrawal it becomes a health effect. Blackout is a health effect. Impaired judgment also becomes a health effect. While drug-induced accident becomes a social effect because it affects the community. Why? Because if you take these drugs, then automatically you will, be not, you will not be into your normal senses and you can cause some harm to majority of people and you are going to affect the society. That's what we call, about, we call them social effect. Now, boys and girls, up to that point, because of time, we are going to leave it up to that point. We are going to leave it. But next time we are going to enjoy more to understand how this uh, exam, the KCPE 2020, was supposed to be tackled and understood properly. I also want to take this chance, boys and girls, to appreciate one boy uh, who did marvelously in this paper, getting the highest score in, uh, in, in the country. Uh, uh, we call this boy uh, Mwenda, Mwenda Kimathi. Mwenda Kimathi, wherever you are, I want to applaud you because in Science 2020, the best person in Kenya was having 90% and you happen also to be one of them. Uh, thank you so much. That means that you scored 100. And uh, thank you so much, boys and girls. We come to the end of our lesson today, this morning, even as we organize to continue with more of these uh, lessons concerning uh, KCPE questions. Thank you so much, boys and girls. Thank you so much. Continue enjoying our program. And we really love you. Take care of yourselves. Corona is real. Bye-bye.